Hey everybody, this is uh, Darren Spader again with the uh, Bay Area News Group, Mercury News, East Bay Times, here with Evan Weback and Mike Leftcow. It is week six of the high school football season. We're moving right along. I think uh, this week we crossed the uh, halfway point of the regular season, guys. We are uh, we're on the home stretch toward the playoffs. Guys excited? It's moving fast. Yeah. Well, I'll get more excited as we get closer to the end, but... Uh... Some good races, right? Some interesting things happening right now. Yeah, yeah we've had a full spring season all already, just about. Yes, we have. Yeah. And now we're going to go for two. We're having so much fun, we're going to have a second spring season. We're going to go for another five games. So, anyhow, uh, Evan, I mean, another great week. By you, Jesus. Uh, 13 and three in week five on the picks. Not bad. Um, well, don't set any expectations. I'm a little distracted this week. Yeah, you, you've got a little bit of a new gig for a little while, maybe, maybe a little longer. Who knows? Um, but you're covering the Warriors now for at least, a, I'm guessing, a couple of weeks at least, right? We'll see what happens. But I'm just making excuses for a tough slate of games that Lefty picked out. <laughs> but you are still going to be following. Uh, still going to be trying to get out to some games on, on Friday nights. Um, but... Uh, well, we've got a few good games this week at the top. I mean, uh, Bellum and Sarah. We uh, we know a lot about the Bells after these first four games. I mean, they've be beaten some uh, quality opponents. Um, Menlo Atherton, which we saw last week, got a big win over Mac. Uh, they've beaten San Leandro on the road. Uh, they took down Central Catholic Modesto. And then last week in a game where they were heavily favored, they did what good teams do. They won with a running clock, um, but now they get Sarah, our number one ranked team, which we know has a lot of talent, but we haven't seen them, you know, have to use that talent against, uh, against you know, a really, really good team. Uh, is this, is this going to be a big test for Sarah or a bigger test for Bellarmine? Right. Evan, we, think, we, we think we know a lot about Sarah. We know we know a lot about Bellarmine, and we'll know a lot more about both teams after this weekend. Uh, but I mean, Sarah's lived up to all the expectations so far. Uh, it would have been, again, you know, we keep harping on this. It would have been great to see them play Pittsburgh and really get to know what they can do. But, you know, Dom Lampkin and Hassan Hassan combined for all five touchdowns last week. That that threat is just as lethal as it has been. Uh, and, you know, we'll see. We'll see if we split in the predictions. But you know, Sarah is still the top team in our rankings, and they're probably there for a reason, right? Bellerman, on the other hand, has shot up from unranked uh, into the top ten now. Yeah, that's pretty. A uh, pretty incredible rise to go from unranked to uh, six this week, and uh, now they're going to be taking on the number one team in a in a game that um, I don't. I, I think it's fair to say, you know, outside of probably Bellerman, nobody did. Did we have this game circled on the calendar? A month ago? Nope. <laughs> Lefty, what do you think? I mean, what do you think of the Bells? Uh, I mean, you, you've been around a long time. You were here with the last time the Bells were really good, which was six years ago. What, what are your thoughts on what they've done? And, and uh, what are your thoughts on where Patrick Walsh's team stands now at Sarah uh, through the first month of the season? Well, I think it's a big test for both teams. I mean, from the Bellarmine angle – this is going to be a, a test to see if they can play a really good team. But, I mean, you look at the teams they beat so far. They beat uh, Central Catholic of Modesto. They beat, uh, wasn't it, Menlo Atherton. They've played and beat some good teams. So they have passed every test that they've had so far. Now, if they go out and play tough against Sarah, then they've passed another test. Mm -hmm. uh, if they go out and lose 48 to nothing, okay, it, Bellarmine wasn't as good as we thought, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think bellarmine has got a good team. I think it's going to be a good test for Bellarmine, but I also think it's going to be a good test for Sarah because Sarah has not played a team as good as Bellarmine so far. And I think Sarah is going to find out Saturday that Bellarmine is a lot tougher than people think. I, you know, who knows what the final score will be or how close it'll be, but I think this is going to be a good test for both of them. In our in our Monday morning lights column, I did note that uh, good teams have been swallowed whole by the Padres on those Saturday afternoon games at Sarah, which is a huge advantage for the Padres. Um, so, 
that's one thing to keep in mind uh, as we get to our picks. But before we get there, let's uh, let's discuss a couple other matchups this weekend. Um, we have a team from Baltimore coming out uh, to Concord on Friday night. St. Francis Academy, not St. Francis with an E-S, St. Francis Academy of Baltimore, a national, uh, national level program coming out to play De La Salle Friday night on ESPN2. Um, we know a lot about De La Salle. I was looking up this team from Baltimore. I know Baltimore is a smaller state than California, but if you look at the 247 sports rankings of uh, high school football players in uh, Maryland for the class of 2022, uh, St. Francis has 11 of the top 25 guys. It's not bad. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, St. Francis is a good program. Yeah. I tend to think that – when I'm kind of comparing the two is a couple, three years ago when St. John's of Washington, D.C. came out here, played De La Salle. It was a good game for the first half, and then you could see St. John's wore down. I mean, the kickoff is at 10 p.m. East Coast time, and I think these kids have a little bit of a tough time adjusting to the time change. Yeah, I know when I've traveled, it's a lot easier going west to east than it is east to west. And we'll see how that affects St. Francis in the second half on Friday night. I mean, a lot of these guys have power five offers. I'm looking at the list. Uh, they got a guy who's committed to Oklahoma, another committed to Virginia Tech, two committed to Boston College, one to Penn State, one to Minnesota, and one to West Virginia. Evan, what do you think when you when you hear that <laughs> about one high school team? Well, I hear I hear there's a guy committed to Cal, a guy committed to Arizona, a guy committed to Notre Dame uh, on De La Salle. Uh, so I mean, I think I think we're in for good football on on, on Friday night. And I mean, as we've seen, De La Salle is beatable this year. Um, St. Francis sounds like a great team, um, but as Lefty noted, I think that travel is going to be a challenge. I think De La Salle is going to be prepared for this game. I think they're going to be prepared for all their games for the re remainder of the season. I think uh, Alan Baugh gave him a good talking to after after that week, uh, after the, the St. Francis with an I uh, and gave them their balls. Um, you know, I was looking back at that uh, Monta Vista team that Jake Hainer played on since Hainer's been getting a lot of pub because of Fresno State. And that team had six or seven power five guys too. Um, and they lost so, I mean, it's not unprecedented. What's that? And they were hammered by De La Salle. Yeah, they were hammered by De La Salle and they hammered Antioch with Najee Harris. So, I mean, you never know. Um, yeah, I mean, St. Francis looks pretty good. But, again, I, I think that time change is a huge factor. Uh, another matchup uh, that we'll be, uh, we'll be keeping an eye on will be Friday night. McClymans uh, coming off the breaking loss where they, where they lost a two-touchdown lead in the fourth quarter on the road at Menlo Atherton last week. And uh, – in overtime on a walk-off field goal. They'll be at home. This will be their third consecutive really huge challenge for Mac. I mean, they, they played Marine Catholic and won that game two weeks ago. They, they lost, uh, obviously, a tight one and a heartbreaker to M.A. Now they're going up against Pittsburgh, which I think will be the biggest of the three challenges. Evan, I mean, what do you think of Mac, and, and can, can they hang with Pittsburgh? Yeah, I mean, it's a supremely talented team. Uh, I think we noted the roster numbers, though. I think they're, it's under 30 or, or around 30. Um, and that's going to be a challenge against a, a pit team that plays fast and is explosive. That defense is going to be going right back on the field again and again. Uh, and, you know, we've seen Pitt, you know, blow out teams. They didn't do that against Wilcox, notably. Um, so this is going to be a chance for them to, to bounce back from a somewhat lackluster performance against a team we all expected them to, you know, have a, have a pretty strong uh, win against and end up being 31-26. Mac, on the other hand, I don't think the, the the loss last week was any sort of indictment. You know, as we saw, we they hung with Marin Catholic, which is another tough opponent. Menlo Atherton, I think, was a team that, was, that I thought was going to bounce back and is a better team than what we've seen so far this season. I think it's going to be a great another great game uh, on Friday night, and I'm looking forward to being there out, out in Oakland and covering it. Lefty, um Pittsburgh had the extra week to prepare for this game. They had last week off. How much of an advantage will that be for the Pirates uh, going up against a MAC team that uh, obviously will be pretty upset and fired up after what happened last weekend? 
Oh, I, I think Pittsburgh with, with its depth, uh, the extra week to prepare, I think Pittsburgh has some advantages coming into this game. Of course, they also are playing the game at McClellan, so McClellan will have the home field advantage. But um, I think this is a real tough challenge for McClellan just because Pittsburgh is big. They've got a ton of talent. So does McClellan's, but Pittsburgh is a really good football team. And this is going to be the toughest challenge that um, McClellan faces. All right. Well, uh, you guys have anything else to add before we get to the picks? Let's no, let's, well, let's go for it. Let's go for the picks. Lefty, you pick the 15 games that we're choosing this week, and we're going to start off with game number one. College Park, one and three against Alhambra, one and three. Obviously, you're familiar with these two schools, Lefty, having grown up in the area. Is this a rivalry game? What is this game? Yeah, it is a rivalry. The campuses are only about five or six miles apart, and these kids do grow up playing against each other in all sorts of sports. They all know each other, so this is a neighborhood rivalry, but um, it's also a game that's hard to predict because even though they're one and three, they're, they're evenly matched. Uh, no <laughs> doubt. The, the Cal Preps computer, man, it struggled here. and It ended up picking College Park to win 21 to 20. Um, yeah. Who you got, Lefty? I'm, uh, I'm going to pick College Park. I think they're uh, – I was looking at comparative scores. They're a little bit better. They've played a little bit better up till now. But, again, the game is at Alhambra, so that is a factor. Yeah, just like the computer, I struggled with this one, too. And just like Lefty, I'm landing on College Park. Well, I'm going to try to make up ground here or fall further back in the standings. I'm going to go with Alhambra on its home field to uh, to beat College Park and to improve to two and three. Uh, game two on the list uh, will be in Oakland over at Skyline High, where Miramani is going to travel uh, through the call to play. Skyline, Skyline's two and two. Miramani's three and zero. Oh. Evan, who you got? I like Miramani on this one. Wow. Okay. Uh, lefty. Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Miramani. I I think they're a little better football team. That's a clean sweep. I'm going to go Miramani too, and the Cal Preps computer also likes Miramani to win twenty two to seventeen. So uh, could go either way. Uh, game three on the list. This is an interesting matchup. Uh, Dublin coming off of the uh, big win over Liberty last week. Uh, a surprise to you and me, Lefty. I think, Evan, didn't you pick Dublin? Not a surprise to you. <laughs> uh, they will be at home, 4-1 and one for the Gales, going up against 4-0 and oh, California High, which had last week off. Um, Lefty, who you got? I'm going to go with uh, California. I think this is a very good football team. Uh, I think they were off last week, so they've had a couple weeks to prepare. And um, even though the game's at Dublin, it's not that big a bus ride. It's not a far bus ride. And I, I can see Cal pulling this one off. Evan? You know, I think Cal could be on upset alert here. I was thinking about, you know, pulling, pulling, picking the Gales again to maybe gain some more ground in the standings. But, you know, Cal's so talented, that offense so explosive, and with a whole week to prepare, uh, I can't pick against the Grizzlies. Yeah, I'm taking the Grizzlies, too. I, I think they have too much for Dublin, although, you know, Dublin obviously proven uh, proven that they're a very, you know, sound team, but I, I'm taking Cal in this one. Uh, game four on the list, Palo Alto 3-2, and two, taking on Homestead 2-2. Two and two. Uh, Pally's won a couple of games in a row, uh, beat Santa Clara last week. Uh, Homestead at two and two wins over Aragon and Fremont of Sunnyvale with losses to Burlingame and the Kings Academy. Um, I'm taking Palo Alto. Who do you guys got? I'll go with Pally. I think they're they're a good. They're a good football team. Yeah, it's a good team. Danny Peters had a huge week last week too, so we'll see. He if did he games together. Going going with Pally too. Didn't he account for like six touchdowns five, five through the year? Yeah, not a bad week. Um, big game in the BBAL Mount Hamilton division. Uh, Live Oak at three and one, going to Leland at three and one. Uh, both of these teams, their one losses were to the uh, to the top teams in the uh, NCBAL De Anza division. Uh, Leland lost to uh, Wilcox, and Live Oak lost to Los Gatos. Uh, looking at the uh, recent history between these teams. Uh, Live Oak has won the past four games against Leland. 
I'm taking Live Oak. Who you got, Lefty? I'm going to take Leland. See, wow. see if they can end that uh, four-game losing streak against them. I'm going okay. Leland, too. Woo. Well, I'm going to go with the Cal Preps computer, as I said. Uh, Cal Preps computer is picking uh, Live Oak to win 27-20. So uh, we'll see if I can make up ground there or, again, fall deeper in a hole. They might have uh, put the wrong button on that computer this time. Yeah, might have. Uh, Sacred Heart Prep, a surprise one and three. Uh, we'll be going to Burlingame, which to some people might be a surprise 4-0. I did see Burlingame in that scrimmage that I chose to go out to. It was a four-team scrimmage, which included Bellarmine and Mountain View and Half Moon Bay. And uh, that was a good scrimmage to go to. A lot of those teams were pretty good, <laughs> pretty good this season. Um, I'm taking Burlingame to go to 5-0 and and to beat Sacred Heart Prep. Are you guys with me or against me? I'm with you, and I'll say I'm personally more surprised to see Berlin game 4-0 than Sacred Heart Prep 1-3. Uh, and three. Okay. Yeah, no, I think Berlin game is a wall coach team, and um, they're playing well this year. So you're taking Berlin game? I'm taking Berlin game. Okay. Uh, game seven on the list, we're picking 15, so we're almost halfway there. Aragon, 2-2 two and two against the Kings Academy, 2-2. Two and two. Uh I'm taking the Kings Academy to win this one. I think Pete Lavarado, uh, great coach. He's going to have uh, uh, TKA pointed in the right direction as we reach the midway point of the season. So I'm taking TKA. Uh, Evan, you with me or against me? Give me TKA. TKA. Okay. Lefty? Yeah, no, I'm going with Kings Academy. I think they've, they're getting it together. Game eight, WCAL game on Saturday afternoon. Midi at one and three with its one win against Mountain View, which that was Mountain View's only loss. Uh, going to Reardon, which is three and one, coming off a, a big loss to uh, Bellarmine last week. Um, I think Reardon's going to win this game. I mean, Midi is fourteen and two against Reardon in the Max Preps era, but I, I just think Reardon is going to have too much for Midi, especially playing in San Francisco. I agree. I'm going Reardon, too. You're going Reardon. Lefty? Yeah, I'm going to pick Reardon, although I'm not as certain about that as I should be. But, yeah, I'll, I'll go with Reardon. Did you change your mind there, or is that what you sent to me in the email? Well, that that's I what I sent to you in the email. I mean um, – you're, you're thinking of changing? I, I'll go – yeah, in fact, I wouldn't mind doing it. I, I'll go ahead and change it and go with Mitty. I think uh, – I'll mark that down. All right, I think Mitty's going to have a breakout game, and eventually. I don't think they're – I mean, I know they struggled, but I think they might pull off the surprise. Okay. I'll go with so Mitty. Sure. Lefty taking Mitty. All right. Uh, game nine on the list, another WCAL game, Saturday evening at, on the hilltop in South San Jose, Valley Christian at home, uh, coming off a, uh, a big comeback against uh, Sacred Heart Cathedral last week, uh, Jurion Dickey. What about Jurion Dickey? Winning catch? Unbelievable. How many defenders did you take off? Like three, four, five? I had to watch it like five times to describe it in the text that I, you know, in the in the copy that I wrote for Monday Morning Lights. That was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was big time. Uh, anyhow, so Jurion Dickey with a huge catch in the final two minutes to uh, a catch and run, I should say, uh, beat uh, Sacred Heart Cathedral last week. So Valley Christian at home, three and one. Taking on SI two and two SI uh, coming off a big loss uh, thirty three nothing at St Francis last week. I think Valley playing at home um, puts it together. I'm not taking. I'm not going at home, so I'm taking Valley. What do you think, Evan? Yeah, I thought about going SI, but I got a big Valley at home. Lefty. Yeah, no doubt in my mind, Valley will win that game. All right, uh, game 10 on the list. This is an interesting matchup. Foothill sky high after winning the Battle of Pleasanton last week with Nick Walsh throwing a touchdown pass from two yards out uh, in the last, I think, four minutes and then a big interception somewhere down the line, I think, in the last minute um, to beat Amador. Um, they'll be at home playing San Ramon Valley. Um, 
Max Prep era, uh, San Ramon Valley is nine and seven against Foothill. Uh, I think they're going to go to 10 and seven. I'm taking San Ramon and Foothill at second loss. Lefty, what do you think? Yeah, I'm going to go with San Ramon Valley, but uh, these teams have played each other many times. And uh, Foothill, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if Foothill pulls the upset, but I think San Ramon's a better team. Yeah, this Evan? was a tough one for me too, but I went with the Wolves. You're going – okay, you're going Wolves. Uh, game 11 on the list, uh, which was a game added late, right? This wasn't on the schedule originally? MA at Oak Ridge? Well, I don't know if it was on the schedule. I mean – Maybe um, it was. Maybe, maybe – Yeah. Maybe Anyhow, um, both of these teams are ranked in the top 100 in the state, according to Cal Preps' computer. Uh MA at two and two, Oak Ridge at three and two. I mean, Oak Ridge's losses were to Folsom and Granite Bay. And obviously we noted that MA lost to Bellarmine and they also lost to that team from Oregon. Uh, MA coming off the, the overtime win over Mac. Long bus ride, but I think MA's got it together. They're gonna have their head coach back who apparently missed the last, the last because of a tooth ailment, emergency tooth surgery or something like that. I think MA wins this game to go to three and two, uh, but it's going to be one tough game for them. So, anyhow, uh, Evan, who you got? Yeah, I mean, maybe that comeback uh, last week kind of charts the course for the rest of their season and, and and gets it going for them. I'm going going with the Bears here. Lefty. Yeah, I'm going to go with MA. I despite the long bus trip, I think they uh, win that game, but they better play better defense than they have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Another interesting matchup, uh, Mountain View at four and one, which I, I think we would have to uh, characterize as a, a surprise, right? Are we surprised that the uh, Spartans are four and one? Yeah, yeah, I am. Okay, they'll be with, with the one loss being to Mitty by a point. Uh, they're going to be on the road playing a one and four Wilcox. Uh, Wilcox probably the best one and four team in the Bay Area. Um, coming up a, a tough loss last week to uh, to Los Gatos. Uh, I think Wilcox gets it together and wins on its home field and uh, takes down Mountain View. Um, Evan? Yeah, I mean, how many times do you pick one and four over four and one? But I'm, I'm going with Wilcox, too. <laughs> Lefty? Yeah, make it three of us. I'm going to go with Wilcox. <laughs> Showing no love for the ranked Mountain View Spartans. Um Game 13, we discussed this in the opening. I think I know how everyone's leaning, but we got to make this official. Pittsburgh at Mac. I'm taking Pittsburgh. Lefty, who you got? Yeah, I'm going to go with Pitt. Evan? Yeah. Give me Pittsburgh. Pitt. Uh, game 14 on the list, St. Francis of Baltimore, as we discussed. Two and one. Only losses was by two scores to St. Thomas Aquinas, the national power out of Fort Lauderdale. Uh, they're going to be traveling across the country to play a 10 p.m. game East Coast time, 7 p.m. here on the West Coast against De La Salle, three and one. Uh, we all know about De La Salle. Interesting, the CalPreps computer picked St. Francis to win 31 to 28, which is was the same score that St. Francis of Mountain View beat De La Salle, 31-28. So I am taking De La Salle to win. I think the Spartans. Uh, uh, like I think you noted, Evan, earlier, I've got, got it together. Um, I think they're going to wear them down and win this game. It's going to be close, but I think De La Salle will pull it out. Evan, you with me? Yeah, I don't think I'm picking against De La Salle again this season. <laughs> Not even the Folsom? Well, we'll have that next week, but we'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. Lefty? No, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with De La Salle. Also, I'm. I really vividly remember that game against St. John's of Washington D.C. a few years ago, and I, I think this could be very similar. That was close, right? It was close, and I think what could happen is St. Uh, St. Francis leads at halftime, but you know, second half starts at eight thirty here. That's eleven thirty on the East Coast, yeah. and even even though high school kids are used to staying up late. Uh, they might wear down by then a little bit. Last game on the list. Man, I'm looking forward to this one. Bellarmine, 4-0 at 
That's Sarah, three and zero. Oh. Lefty, who you got? I'm gonna go with Sarah, but I I think Bellerman is gonna show it's a, a good team. I don't. I say this game within two scores. Okay, Evan. Yeah, I think this game is gonna be really close for maybe the first three quarters, but I think Sarah's gonna want to put Bellerman in his place a little bit this season and show that they're really at the top of the W Cal. So you're taking Sarah. Uh, I'm going to take Sarah, too. I had marked it, Sarah. Uh, I think it's going to be close. Uh, I came this close to picking Bellerman, but I've seen so many good teams go to San Mateo for those Saturday afternoon games. I don't. I haven't looked at the forecast, but sometimes when it's 80 degrees there in San Mateo, on that field, it feels like it's 95 or 100. It gets hot and... Uh, I just think that Sarah's going with that size. They just wear teams down. <laughs> and and you're right, Evan. I mean, a game can be close for a half, can be close into the third quarter, but it's the last part of the fourth, uh, last part of the third quarter where something turns and the fourth quarter, it all slips away. And then it turns out to be, you know, you're looking at a 10 to seven game that all of a sudden is 24 to seven or 31 to seven. It just happens in a blink. So, um, I think Bellingham's a really good team, but I think uh, Sarah in its first real big game of the 2021 fall season is going to be out to show something. So, I'll let me, uh, I mean, Bellingham seems to be a team that they've got a fairly young and aggressive coaching staff. Am I correct? They got a great, got a great coaching staff. The, the coaching staff is all Bellingham guys, at least on the varsity level, uh, and led by Jalal Beachman. Uh, they've they've brought back that tradition, that Bellarmine tradition that that Mike Janda built, but kind of slipped away towards the latter couple of seasons of his tenure, where the bells you know uh, fell off the radar a bit. Uh, this is a this is a program on the rise. Um, they play smart, they play hard, they do have athletes, they do have size, they just don't have as much size and probably as many athletes as Sarah. Um, so, I mean, that was... We all know that Patrick's, uh, Patrick Walsh is a terrific coach, so... Right. Um, but would I be shocked if Bellerman won? No. I mean, they're a very smart team. And you know, when you, you go out there and you don't make mistakes, you know, you can stay in any game. So... That's why I came very close to picking them, but I've seen good teams go to Sarah. And and if this game were at San Jose City, maybe I would have gone the other way. But it's at Sarah on a Saturday afternoon, and that's that's not a unless you're Los Gatos from like six years ago, seven years ago with Drew Brown at quarterback and we would the big Bruce and running back slash fullback where they went and beat Sarah twenty eight to nothing in a, C, a CCS playoff game there. This is a, it's a tough, it's a tough spot for any good team. So. But I'm just wondering if this Bellarmine team's the kind of team that, you know, the coach is sitting there saying, guys, you got nothing to lose. This is, it's a win move for you. You make it close, it's a win. You, I mean, it's, I just think Bellarmine might be that kind of team. It's a, if they win this game, uh, if Bellarmine wins this game, I mean, we're talking like a magic carpet ride to to the St. Francis game at the end of the month. Well, they, they still have balance on the chaos in the CCS. What's that? And, and total chaos in the CCS. Oh, even God. Though. Yeah. Well, uh, that would be good. No doubt. <laughs> um, yeah, it'll uh, – if Bellarmine were to win this game, um, it's going to be fun doing our rankings next week. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, else to add before we let Evan go to his uh his now day job um <laughs> so uh, what's your prediction for the Warriors this season I don't know ask me again in three weeks when he finds out if uh uh Wiggins is going to be uh with the team for more than half of the games exactly well that is an inter interesting situation isn't no, it no doubt no doubt so Anyhow, uh, check us out, mercurynews.com, eastbaytimes.com. We've got predictions. We'll have the preview. We've got our rankings up. We've got half of the week. Boys, 
and girls. Got girls athlete of the week. Um, please vote. And uh, uh, we'll have all the game coverage as always in the roundup over the weekend. We'll have uh, live coverage from the De La Salle St. Francis uh, Academy game. Um, McClyman's uh, Pittsburgh, Sarah Bellerman, and a few more. So check us out, mercurynews.com, eastbaytimes.com. Uh, we're going to sign off for now. Until